I was sitting in my office behind a closed door doing what I usually do on Monday evenings, namely preparing correspondence with some of my friends. Then, I heard the very quiet, almost imperceptible hum of the garage door motor running. Anyone not used to the peculiar sounds of my house probably wouldn't have heard it. A moment later, there was the slamming of the door from the garage. My wife Bev, a tall and not so sleek woman, tends to slam doors rather than close them as little ladies and gentlemen should, my parents and grandparents repeated time after time. But even to her, that clap sounded like an angry clap. I thought for a moment, but no sooner had I deepened my musings than she swung the door open to me and shrieked, you served him at home, you bastard. I stared at her in puzzlement, seeing her cheekbones tense, her furious breathing coming out of her flushed face. I watched her for a moment, then leaned back in my chair. So, I'm the one who served him, I repeated calmly. You know you did it, she hissed. What makes you think I did it? He called me and gave me a hard time. That's why I'll probably never see him again, she shouted. I didn't like where this was going. Ah, uh, Bev, why don't you tell me what the hell your rant was about? I asked calmly, calmer than I actually felt. That pissed her off. You filed a report on Barry for dissent, and you did it at home, in front of his kids. Couldn't you have waited a couple more weeks? First of all, I said, I don't know any Barry. Secondly, I didn't serve any papers on anybody, and thirdly, what's a split? What do you mean, family split? I mean, are you having an affair with this guy? She hesitated for a moment, looking slightly puzzled, and then spoke again. I didn't believe you for a minute, she said venomously. You know, I've been sleeping with him for months. I was stunned, but I managed to throw her off balance too. And I've known that, or you've been sleeping with him for months. That totally freaked her out. We've seen your bloody detective, he's as inconspicuous as a turd in a coffee cup. I pulled a small stool over to my chair and put my left foot on it, leaning back slightly in my leather office chair. So, you saw that you were being followed by a detective and assumed that I was the one who hired him? I spoke slowly and quietly, and the wind in her sails began to subside. She sat down in the guest chair. Come on, Jeff. I'm not stupid. You've known for a long time. I've been waiting for the right time to tell you, but honestly, did you really have to do it in front of his kids? One day, I'm going to have to be their stepmother. I interrupted her. Bev, I said, are you really telling me that you slept with a guy named Barry, and he promised to marry you, and you think I hired a private detective to track you down, and that I arranged for your lover's service? She paused, then nodded. Yes, she said quietly. Well then, I continued, I did nothing of the sort. I've noticed your lack of emotional self-care for months now, and admittedly, I've been wondering if you were going to quit. Well, I mean, just once or twice, but I couldn't believe it. No, not my Bev. Her face began to pale. So, it's obvious to me, as it is to you, if you have a brain, that some other husband had the nerve to sue the son of a, well, what's his last name? Maybe I'll get into it too. A few tears leaked out of her eyes. She shook her head. No, she muttered. I'm not going to help you destroy him. Then, pack up your things and get out. You're not staying here anymore, I said flatly and coldly. She made mental calculations. So, you weren't the one who organized the surveillance, she asked with hope in her voice. No, I answered. She grinned evilly through her tears. Then you have no proof. Barry won't turn me in. And she got up to leave. Yeah, I said as she was on her way out the door. Bev. She stopped and looked back, her smug look fighting for supremacy over her sad one. You forgot what night it is, I said with a slight chuckle. Her face turned ashy gray, and she turned away and walked out. I heard some banging upstairs and then on the stairs as I left the office. I saw her dragging two suitcases toward the garage entrance. You and those friends of yours, she spat out angrily, and with that, she left the room, the garage, and my life. The sound of the garage door slamming shut was music to my ears. My uncle David wasn't blind, 
but his eyesight was quite poor, and he required large print books. Later, when the font size became lacking, I began reading them aloud to him. Later, my parents bought me a tape recorder, an old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, and I spent hours reading books onto the reel when there was no such thing as an audiobook. My unpaid labor gradually became a hobby, and at 16, a job. The local radio station found out about me and hired me to read the news on weekends. I have an affinity for the blind, and I have friends in the blind community. My office walls are carpeted to muffle the echoes, as they are in small radio stations, and I spend Monday evenings writing and recording voicemails to my blind friends, which I then record and post on my blog. And poor Bev forgot about it. I recorded her entire rant, including the confession, on a digital voice recorder. For what it's worth, I did indeed organize a service for her lover that night. I have photographs, audio recordings, and other evidence, and yes, my private investigator assigned two operatives to them, one who was supposed to act like Barney F., and one who they weren't supposed to notice. So, to summarize, I got rid of the cheating, got compensated by the cheating, got compensation from his employer, he slept with my other half during work hours, and I have a great story to share with my friends. Life can be so sweet when it wants to be.